some people are listening to the wire. So this is intended to be a work session. This is not intended to be a presentation by a kind of IT and board, just like the SDI board, you know. Uh, this was meant to be a work session, so we can talk and about what we have for IT and uh, I proposed four sessions during this week. All are scheduled in the fan club by our, our schedule master. And they will happen, and the, the schedule has changed, so you should check the uh, fan club. The next one is probably in two days. Uh, I'll try to avoid too much conflict with other talks. We couldn't avoid because a very important talk will happen during the second I think, session. Uh, originally, I fixed some topics for the sessions, but that's open. This is not my session, you know. The, the, the topic for the first session was uh, talking about infrastructure, what we have for IATN currently, and also to discuss together what you guys would want to see in the session number two, three, and four. Okay. Mm, so, Still, I had, I don't have any screen here, so I have to turn, sorry for that. Uh, I did set some kind of pseudo schedule for this session. And the point was talking about, first to explain to everybody around here, to explain the status of the churro server. Churro being a Spanish word, which I pronounce very badly. Uh, this is the name of the server we have in Extremadura. Uh, it, was, uh, it is given and hosted by the Extremadura region. And the name Churro comes from the breakfast we had over there for the first sessions. So just have all of us explain, oops, uh, have all of us explain what's going on on this server, what is currently running, what are we, we are doing with it. Uh, I was supposed to make first point um, excuse me I had a yeah what what we are on Truro is actually on uh, you see the URL itn.debian.net which is actually a wiki a very simple one and it lists thanks to Fao uh, the services we have on Truro Truro I will succeed one day our first server, so first service we have is uh, Putol. So I am supposed to, to give a short summary about what we are doing with Putol on Shuro currently, uh, because uh, currently I would define as the Putol admin myself. But well, it's still not very production. So first of all, this is not exactly production stuff. This is work in progress, basically. For those who don't know what Puto is, uh, Puto is a web interface basically for translation and it could be one of the future way to access translation material for translators. But it needs a lot of background work. For Currently in Puto we have, and this was intended to be explained also to my fellow co-admins, uh, Felipe and uh, Nicolas and uh, Grisou also, what Currently is running on Puto, but this changes every day. So. Uh, Puto supports a number of languages, which we defined. These are basically the languages supported by Debian installer. And projects. So for each project, there are files spread over the file system. And it gives access to the file. So if I take the first project is DI, basically uh, the, all the levels of DI. And this one is considered as nearly in production. Because behind this, the putter is hooked to the SVN of DI and to the SVN of the other projects, console data, a lot of stuff, the package. And putter can commit directly in these projects. I had to negotiate with the <laughs> <laughs> uh, project. I mean, it, 
nearly in production because there are still some problems, conflict problems, if someone changes a translation outside Putol and someone changes in Putol. Okay, so these are problems we have to solve. But still, we have here the status of the eye seen from Putol. And some of the teams are currently beginning to work with Putol to translate the Kurdish team and uh, the Basque team. And, well, this leads to some problem conflict. So uh, this is not yet complete work in progress. What we have also, Putol itself is not a translation work, but it's needed to have a translated interface. By the way, I apologize because my interface is in French, of course, but if we hadn't this Putol's, um, Putol project, we wouldn't have this translated to French. There is a test place for translators, so this is basically a sandbox, right? And this is all what we have except PODEVCONF. This is not in production. I think most people know about PODEVCONF translation. This is my hobby, getting 100% for everything, you know. And currently, I, this is work in progress. I have some work to import all the PODEVCONF stuff into Putol and to find a way to exchange and maybe in the future to allow translators to work from here and package maintainers to get their material from, not from Puto, but maybe from a backend, from a SVN or whatever. This is work in progress. Okay, this is long because the server is not very fast. And so currently about this PODEP comp stuff in two words, there are some magic behind in magic script that try to import stuff and commit to a SVN. Debian dash L10N as the project on Aliot. There is a, an SVN server which hosts all the magic stuff done by uh, Felipe, Nicola, or even myself sometimes. And also the data. Do we have something? No, it's still running. Maybe it's broken. I, I have no idea. This, this is really work in progress, you know? So the point would be at some moment to allow people and translator to work through Putol directly on translation or if they want directly in a SVN and package maintainers to have some tools to get the translation instead of sending dozens and dozens of bug reports for each and every PO DevCon translation. That's basically the point. Okay, we have it. And well, the, the numbers are the number of words. This is quite a big, big project. For, for Putol, this is already a big project. So we can see, well, the same things that we have on the Debian central translation statistics on the website, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the point is here. English, because there are, there are a few, there is probably one or two en.po files somewhere in some po.conf packages. So English appears also. But they are not very good translators, you know, those, <laughs> those gringos are not very good. <laughs> Okay, so that, that's basically what I wanted to. I didn't cheat it. Not we are not 100 percent. If you look on the the, the website statistic, we are 101 percent. <laughs> okay. I'm going to follow my stuff and not to get the monopoly on the word. Hmm. So basically, this is what we have put on. We have translation statistics. So this is uh, Nicolas' game. So up to you. You record it. Yeah, but you have to decrypt on the. <laughs> yeah. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Uh, we have a mic. C can we get the mic for for Nicolas? Does it work? You 
want me to go back to the wiki? I should have the wiki somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here. Yeah, that's fine. So it's maybe you can go to to the yeah the unstable one which is yeah this is what I had. Okay. So it's I'm gathering the the statistic of the pure depth of uh, translation in for all languages. Yeah, you only see the the most translated languages, but but if you go down, you got some more. Yeah, okay, let's skip French for once. Okay, so Swedish, for example, yeah, that one. You can see the the number of translated string and how it uh, evolved during the, the time. Uh, so. Um, we we started gathering the statistics since. Uh, one month before <coughs> the release of Edge. So yeah, so it's we, more we than are what you can see there. We are the entire. If uh, you if you sign. want to to make some some other other graphs, the the data is also available as uh, some RRD uh, files. Mm. Yeah, we, there, there is a raw access to the yeah, RRD if you, files. If you go to the URL, you can remove this. Yes. So you got statistics for unstable testing. Unstable BTS is um, for some languages. I can also uh, find which file are already translated and sent to the BTS. So it's for the languages which are using the coordination page and the Todo URLs. Just see the yearly. It's probably about the same. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, statistics for, for the pure.conf pure, but also for the program pure file and pure for a uh, pure file. So it's a pure pure file which are used for the documentation. Pure for anything, yes. You have stats for the website also, yes. Yes. Are these working? Yes, it should be working. Maybe you can go to mounts. Mm -hmm. uh, so the ARD file are generated, uh, and I'm gathering the file, but uh, I still need to, to have a cron script to generate the, the images. So that's the reason why the, the date is still August 4. Uh, the point is that for, for the website, uh, the translation doesn't change a lot, so you won't see a lot of changes. And all this is currently done, crowned on Churro. Yeah. And under the Debian i18 and robots group, that's it. So yeah. this is basically in production. We can yes, say that. Yes. Hmm? Yeah, this is the point that needs to be seen what we have currently in production, what can be used and is useful stuff. Putor is half the way. I think that the statistics are production stuff. Yes, yes. We just probably need to mm, put some fancy stuff around them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the URL won't change and if you need to, to, to get some statistics for any reason, you can do yeah. that. Yeah, as an example, I used I have a talk in a few days and I use the, some of this graph to, to give some picture about stuff. And Maybe you can go to the DI, it might be interesting because it shows... Uh, I won't be the one to go to DI for once. No. Okay. Months. Yes. Months. Uh, CVS. CVS. So Statistics are taken from the ICS. So yeah. you can okay. The first one with the uh, underscore underscore. It's the, the number of number strings. of strings. So it's the number of strings in the in the pod file. So it doesn't change that much. No. <laughs> and you can go to level one dot png. Level end, one at the end. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that could help each team to, to see the progress and to, to, to well, set goals or whatever. 
we can see some updates here. Uh, it might be important for DI because at some time they will have to, to decide whether a, a language must be included in DI or not. I think the number of uh, translation is important, but maybe also the, the effort which was done recently. Uh, to take the decision, it might be interesting to, yeah. to get those graphs. Okay, maybe we should stop with the statistics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, what's important, uh, I don't know what, where is the wiki, but. Code edition pages? Yes. This uh, is your stuff also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can go to, for example, the French one. Uh, Just for example. Yeah. Huh? You know. Okay. <laughs> this is the French cabal running the IT <laughs> and so. <laughs> so it doesn't look the same in Conquer or on. Uh, by status, so some language team, and if you are new language team, but I don't think so, uh, it, you might be interested in using that. We are sending, each time we are translating a file, we are sending a, uh, a mail to, to a mailing list with a special format, and uh, those mail are recorded and passed to, to to find what is going on and who is working on what translation. So For instance, we should have the yeah the translation of beep, whose maintainer just entered the room, is yeah uh, Rhonda sent recently a call for translation for beep, and we can track that. Yeah, Simon Payard did a request for review. So currently this translation has not been sent to the maintainer. Maybe Actually you can click on that link, it shows, yes. uh, it shows the mail what I the link look like, uh, what the mail look like. Mm -hmm. So it's the title of the mail, it's uh, first a tag, which is RFR, which is request for review. And after you, you get the type of, uh, of file, it's a pure depth translation then the package and the name of the file. And um, this, is, this is something we use in the French team because we can put anything after. It just says that the file has one fuzzy and one untranslated. So it basically says you can pick it up if you have very few times. Some people prefer some big files and others want some very small files. And then probably, yeah, and probably Simon French. sent the translation, actually sent the diff. So these ones I think are useful for the coordinators of each team. So if you are used to those pa page, there, there have been a, a change recently, maybe you can go up and sort by package. And because uh, okay. I've added support for history, Okay, now you can, well, we can have a look at that one. So it's a user, uh, Christian noticed at some time that uh, the file needed some updates, so he sent a MAG, which is, uh, which mean uh, needs for update in French. And yeah, we need to changed. standardize still on, on this because we sometimes use uh, French acronyms. Then uh, I sent a request for review and uh, mm -hmm. last call for comments and later on a, a bug to, to the BTS. And if in the next day the, the bug is fixed, it will be tagged as done. And after three days, the, the line will disappear. So it really helps a lot the, the teams to um, to manage the, the translation and see what what is going on and what uh, if you start by by date we, we can see that there are still some requests for your review from more than one year ago and probably probably means that the translator disappear or something won't happen. 
Yeah, that's been a big improvement for for coordinators, and I think one of the project is to slowly integrate features that were in robots used by other teams. The the Catalan team as a robot, mm. Dutch team as a robot, and all of them have such features. And the point is to make it in, make them in this one robot. Mm. Yeah, that's. Good stuff. And I think we can consider now this as a production topic. Yes, it, it, it's changing, but it's a uh, fixing bug on fixing some wishing bugs also. So, coalition things. Uh, okay, so that one is a, is a tool for Christian mainly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually only use that one. So the point I, I think many around the, around about the NMU campaigns, basically it means uh, the, trying to spot the bug reports for translation that haven't been fixed by maintainers and for which an NMU can be done. Now NMU are more or less accepted for translation stuff there is a process which is documented here. <laughs> Very formalized in my head, still uh, meant to respect the maintainers, etc., etc. But and the point of the is to find targets. So, so when Christian wake up every day, yeah. he, he can pick up the the new. Yeah. I open my radar and my radar says me, oh, these ones, the, the, the packages are identified, uh, the, the system crawls every, the BTS, yes? Yes, the BTS every, every day. And uh, tries to find the L10 tagged bugs. Yes. For each package and sometimes and there is a very good algorithm <laughs> to s to rank so stuff. If a package has a lot of L10 and bug, then it's interesting to, to enable it, but also we, we have to take into account the age of the bugs. If all the bugs were reported yesterday, it's not uh, necessary, so there is also... But if the bugs are very, 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 very old, then the translation can change the most Yeah, that it's still worth fixing, if, even if the translation is a little bit outdated. But we no longer have much outdated translation because of the NMU campaigns. Uh, these first bugs are actually bugs that will never be fixed because of various stuff. They, they are mostly special stuff. Uh, these packages are not using PODEPConf. So for Pine, it will become really critical for Lenis Plus One. So we will remove Pine from uh, Debian, and everybody, nobody will care. I don't. <laughs> I think uh, kernel package is no longer used to build kernel packages anyway. So not very important. Apache, I don't remember why. But the the first target actually currently is Snoopy, <laughs> and uh, this one is. Already, I just uploaded an uh, NMU today, mm. and so on and so on. As long as you go down, you find recent <coughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, just a question: I don't care about uh, non-free software so much. Uh, it is true that you take them in, in the same uh, way as everything else, or do Mo you more or less? Yes. Uh, okay. all, all the I think that all our statistics are include the non-free stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. I have no problem with it, but uh, I was uh, just knowing DDTP, which ignores everything else. And it's in ignoring non-free? DDTP yeah. ignores, yeah. 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 So, okay, thank you. I would say badly currently. Uh, I think that we, did, we generally badly deal with copyrights anyway. Even in main, we, we don't... There are no, usually there are no copyright either in the PO file. The license is not uh, explicitly mentioned. 
usually there is a list of uh, translator and previous translator, but it's not really it's not maintained by every translator. And we recommend people to to add a, a line like uh, this translation is uh, uh, uses the same license as the package. Yeah. I don't see. I, but sorry for the green on yeah. black stuff, but. We are. We were trying inside the French team to enforce this. This. This is the result of discussion we had uh, last year at last, at last DevCon. We we said that we would enforce that, but we have not been very active. So basically, this is the header we are using, putting copyright of. Is it good or not? So copyright in me. Okay. So, but if another translator comes up. Uh, Currently, we replace the copyright, which is probably not good. Uh, we, I think, the more important for me is the probably the license. So it's written. This file is distributed under the same license, same license as, as the, uh, the Yodine package, and I think this is the safest way to deal with things. For me, it probably is. But for for me, for non free, we don't even know if. Uh, the author allowed to, to translate the, the translation the, the string so it, it really depends on the package and it's the same problem with the DTTP yeah. we we don't know if we we are allowed to, to translate so well frankly Nicolas answer is good uh, how do we deal with the copyright and license badly <laughs> <laughs> But on the other, the other hand, the text, the description, and the uh, DevCon stuff was actually written by Debian maintainer, right? Not, not always. Not always. Some maintainers just come from the website with the upstream. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the PO DevCon sometimes, the, the English mailing list uh, rewrites the text, so the copyright should go to us also, so, well. Well, I never cared personally a lot about these things, so that might explain what, why we don't care a lot about these things, I'm afraid. So what was about, yeah, the Yelten, and I think we, this is basically a tool, and a tool in, in production, very useful, because it helped a lot to close a lot of bugs. Okay, translation material is also good production stuff. Yes. Nicola, mm -hmm. again. <laughs> Did you click on it? I can mm -hmm. click on it, of course. So here you can find all the PO file from the archive. Uh, well, it's not only PO file because you get also the menu and the templates and some stuff I should remove. <laughs> and uh, if you are really interested in the PO .conf, PO files, then you can also take the archives. But uh, if, for example, in the website there are some links to the PO file, and it it links to, to, that, to that directory. directory. Yeah, I think we can just put something. Uh, uh, Second one. Yeah, again French. Okay, let's go to German. Yeah. yeah, they are missing three strings. Ha ha ha. Yeah, than more than three because the stats. Th this thing is a bug in the package, actually. Uh, but the, uh, yeah, you see the link at the bottom yeah. just links back to the material. So the website, the Debian website, currently depends on Shuro. <laughs> That's an important point. So it's free to implement. Yeah. For quite a long time now. Since Lenny. Since Lenny, yes. So this is real production stuff. And this material also is also used. I showed the PO Deb Conf in Putol. I use this stuff to re import in Putol, to re import in DSVN. So currently this is a little bit duplicated but mm. yeah all the material gathering is also run on churro so it's testing and unstable 
uh, mostly because we are tracking unstable, but at some uh, specific time we are also trying to, to follow what is happening in testing. So right now, for <laughs> example, um, we will try also to provide a page the, in the website, page, yes. which is basically the same, but for, for testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is something because everybody knows that I'm run, always running for 100 percent. But some maintainers sometimes tell me that there is no point in getting 100 percent for unstable. It could be better to try getting 100 percent for testing. So we discussed with Nicola to try having. Did you? S it's there is something done. somewhere. It could be done during that month. In some corner somewhere. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't during that month again. Most most of the native packages are freezing their strings for the yeah. Uh, those who are freezing the more more freezing are those I indirectly control through the Debian installer levels. Right. D package apt aptitude. Yeah. Yeah. If the aptitude maintainer changes the string, I jump on him and <laughs> 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 no, but this is more seriously speaking, this is an agreement between us and most of the maintainers of now of the native packages. What's missing, we have nothing to track the status of native packages specifically. Yeah. One more item to do this. We, we have the one tool uh, which can provide a, a textual table, let's say <coughs> that way. Yeah, I uh, which is basically the same as uh, on the website. So yeah. it indicates what needs to be updated. And I think there is one option to, yeah. to provide the list of pure files, which are not pure devconf, and to only select uh, the package which are native. Native packages. And the, the, this tool, I use it to track down and to try to focus the French team on the native packages because we. There is, in my opinion, no point in translating upstream software unless the maintainer requests for that. Some do. Yeah, yeah that was about material. Okay. Compendia. So it's a, it's a work from uh, Eddie Petriso. Um, it's also using the material and it's gathering all the string from all the PO file and it creates a big PO file which can be used as a compendium. The compendium is just a database with some existing translation. And there are different ways to, to use that uh, compendium. First, it can be used if you want to initialize a new PO file. If some some strings that have already been translated, then you 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 can win a lot of time. And there is another way to to use those pure files, which is to detect some some errors, because if a string is if a string is translated differently in different packages, maybe it's not an error, but maybe it is, and it uh, it's really easy to 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 find them. Uh, do you have a small one? No, only big ones. One megabyte? Oh, it's maybe small compared to some others. What do you want me to do with it? Just to open it? Mm. No, it will, I, I have no idea what it will open on my um, machine, so <laughs> <Don't look laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> okay, so you will, you will, I'm pretty sure you will figure out uh, how to yeah. find the yeah. Uh, the strings which are translated differently in different people. Yeah, and Eddie did some very, very rough documentation how to use it with Kelbevel, and he uses it for Romanian, actually. It's very useful because one can fill in PO files with already translated stuff. Where is the documentation? Uh, somewhere. Uh, <laughs> 
Will we move it's it? Blood, yes. No, we, 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 uh, we moved it, but maybe I messed yeah. up somewhere. Can you go to the coordination pa pages? Yeah, where? where? In the middle of yeah, the here? here? Yes. Compendia uh, docs. Compendia no, no, just Yeah, yeah I, I, I was the one moving. No, no, go back and Compendia. doc. Doc? I think yeah. you can put it here. Yeah. But it, it will move, but uh, we will put the link on the... Yeah, the the in the documentation currently, uh, just uh, screenshots. Okay. <coughs> okay, as if this is basically work in progress that can be used as production stuff. But there is no fancy stuff around here. This is the status for most things where we are is we need to organize this thing and put some nice painting around them. Okay. Does, does the compendium uh, take into account all the next packages? No, the, the no. compendium so only runs for pure dev content. I think. At some time it, it did it for, for the, all the pure file. I don't know if it's this case. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of changing <laughs> the script. It feels the artist. <laughs> and basically, the, all the script that produce this information are the, the Debian dash Elton and uh, SVN. The plan is to package all this stuff. Yeah, so currently it's mostly the SVN version that we are running on the draw. Um, it would be nice to to be able to, to package everything for for two reasons. First, it's will it would stabilize the, the code base for true, but also for some CDD it might be interesting to to translate the for example the new description introduced by package of that CDD. It could be interesting to to gather also the material specific to that CDD and etc. So it could be interesting. Well, something about this. In, in principle, we are doing nothing else than, than translating <laughs> normal descriptions, but we just try to focus a special audience to, to this specific description. So it's, it's in principle, it's nothing specific, but just to attract uh, more people. But you are doing packages. No, no, we no. have completely Debian packages. There are no other packages that. But uh, it depends on how tools you have on them. Yes. We have on the uh, but my, the tool I have written uh, uh, points only for, for official Debian packages to trans translate those things. Nobody I else. also know we, we received a, a request from uh, Michel, from Michel who, who is developing some Debian package for, for a company and he yeah, wanted to, to provide description, translation of description. Uh, but he has to clarify where to, to put the translations somehow. Yeah. There is no, no means to do so. And, and my, my current uh, plan was only, I took also main in, uh, in, in, in account, that's why I was asking. That we have uh, official Debian packages and for, for these packages you should get the link to translate. This is only, it is normal translation <laughs> the description, nothing else than is done here but just focusing a specific audience to, to which knows about these packages. Okay, which brings us to the Debian package translate, uh, description translation DDTP. Uh, I will give the mic to you, you can give the mic to... I don't care about DDTP, so it, it should be translated. It should anyhow. be translated, anyhow. That's yeah. the main point. Yeah. So the idea, Misha, if, if you want to give us some Yes. Status of DDTP country? Yes, the status. Okay, let's go to this side. Um, <coughs> the old story, yes, the old DDTP server. Uh, maybe you can go to the website, this link. Yeah. So here, ddtp.debian.net again, this is not Shuro which we named Spätzle specifically for Grisu. <laughs> nice. Yes, um, these are the numbers of the statistic. 
you see the languages in the state. Go downstairs, please. Okay. Then you so see the numbers um, of the translation of the um, different languages in the system. Um, you see um, um, the Japanese are counting every day. Um, they use the mail interface, the old mail interface. It's still running. Um, maybe I will make <laughs> some changes with it because we have some problems with spam or something like this. But we have also a web interface since uh, one or two years, I think. Mm. Um, and after the last um, meeting in Extremadura, we um, have this web interface on the same server. Um, I think down. Uh, I, I should go back, I think, yes. And go oh, to the yes, we can Yeah, go we have way. a link to the DDTSS, yes. which is this web interface to <coughs> DDTT. Yes. Um, if this web interface, um, everybody can um, get uh, untranslation, un untranslated um, description and can translate it. The, the nice thing is that these descriptions are all normally all small, that you can make it um, in some minutes, um, maybe. Um, maybe you can get one, um, the French one or something, they can show it, the web interface. You want to me to show yes, the French only one? Only Actually, we are not a good example. We are not very good translators for package descriptions. It's only for the so web interface. So Grisou told me that some work is done, but I have no idea who is doing it, <laughs> which, is, which is one of the main concerns we will have to deal with in, uh, I think, uh, Ronda has big concerns about that. <laughs> Uh, the, the control of the, of the, not because it needs to control people, but control the quality of the, the translation. Okay. If you get one of the spending translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can click on any of these. Yes. Okay. It's only an example <coughs> to show it. And still, all this is running on Churo. So that, that was, sure I think, that was one of the main achievements of last years is to bring all this stuff. Some was running on Grisou server, some were running on uh, Martin servers. So all these things yes. are on Shure. And Shure is now uh, makes update and it's mm. running with a lot of tools. So, so then you can um, see the untranslated stuff and the translation. Um, sometimes there are um, some parts translated because of uh, memory um, of the translation stuff um, in the server and you can um, change these things and um, go um, to the um, end of the page and uh, submit this. That and one is a tricky one to translate. <laughs> yes. This is basically join meets the concerns of Andreas uh, for Maybe, translating yes. technical stuff, Debian science stuff in, in that case. <laughs> Okay, um, we have a, a request from um, Andreas and some other uh, people uh, in the past that they um, like to um, change some translations um, if they find an error or something like this. Um, last week I um, make a change, a fix um, to the web interface. Um, it's not really online um, at this point that you get the same um, um, interface and can change um, things on the translated um, translate and, and description and this um, change will be sent uh, per email uh, maybe in the future to the um, language um, mailing list um, and then the um, expert, translation expert can show um, the changes and maybe commit it um, with the server. Um, this is nice. Uh, maybe we get um, some links on um, packages db.org um, and some um, smaller sites like this from Andreas um, from this um, um, past packages that they have um, specified in technical stuff and then maybe um, in physics um, may oh this is a wrong spelling or something like this and can change it. Um, hmm? This is chemistry, I understand that. Yeah, I should have translated that one. I'm not sure it is very well translated. Yeah, it's very well translated because nothing <laughs> is translated. <laughs> That's 
stop. That's funny. Did you ask any ID about the author of the translation? No. No. Yeah. That, that, that's one of the points we will need to address in the evolutions of the DDPP and more um, concepts of owning translation, something we are very sensitive at for POW com for programs, translations. So that, that's, it joins the, the concerns about the quality and the, the QA processes uh, around that. But still with the DDTP, I think that the teams can set up their own process around the DDTP, the Brazilian one. Yeah. yeah. He says yes. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the past, I've also said um, for every translation, there, um, the translator and the reviewer were stored in the database, and only the um, um, first translation translator can change it because of the, the first system. Um, we don't have this uh, while we have um, now this uh, web interface. Um, some languages um, require to log in and they have this also. Um, then the author and the translator and the reviewer are stored in the database um, and you can find them and can teach them. Um, but I think. Um, so the, the warning that was on the top of the page there about the cancelling, is, is that because it? it some yes, it's yes, working that nobody, uh, that not at the same time, two um, user uh, translates the, uh, the same uh, transcription. But if, if, I mean, lots of people will go to that page and just click back and, and leave it. It's so not it because it should be something else in the timeout or something like this. Normally so I should, I should quit, click on abandon yeah, somewhere? Yeah, so it's still like that because the, the, the other page has this. I was about to hit back. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, many people hit back. I guess I think so. Yes. Yes. Well, it would. It would, yeah. it would. Well, my, my personal idea about all this is we have a tool that allows countries, that some teams, to do some massive work with probably sometimes low QA. Depends. I think the Brazilian team has a good QA. For, for their work. Um, there is no QA for French. I have no idea about the QA for German. These are the most, most active. Uh, Japanese, I have no idea about their, Q, their QA process. Maybe they are just, just translating stuff. Because this is such a huge task, but very visible stuff. So mm, this is a deal between doing a lot, but doing it quite badly and doing better than doing few. I think it's less <laughs> work if we have all the stuff translated, maybe in, in a lower quality and uh, it's less work to find the errors and fix it. Uh, maybe you have um, spelling errors and all the same, then you can get um, set or regular expression to fix it it's in this way. Um, that's that's country the status. Is there something about PO? Because uh, I like you a lot about using PO for DDTP and uh, where are we currently about P using PO for DDTP? Yes. Uh, we, we have some ways to use PO or not? We don't. Uh, we can use PO generally, but we must change something because the um, old interface don't use the PO. Um, the interface don't use PO, but mm -hmm. we can change it. Uh, we yeah. give you um, patches and you make it. There's no yeah. problem. And store, and store, store the data in PO files. This is something we discussed with the yeah. other so I'm working on the different platforms already using the PO files for the efficiency. To, to, to do it, to do it one way and another. Yeah, so yeah. yes, that would be interesting to. Yeah, like we we are busy. Uh, put put on the same the same platform. Yes, but we try to. I, I, we we already we have something that we have running script to um, um, to export PO 
other stuff in PO and Virtual is broken after this, but because there's too many for Virtual. Yeah, I tried, I tried once to import. Actually, it's even more because I have a script, very, very experimental stuff, badly written, that imports DPO data provided by uh, DDTP into Putol, but Putol completely explodes. I think this was only yeah. one language, I think. Uh, for one or two languages, yes. now it's working. Oh, I tried to import Japanese and German, and it works. But if I nice. import the entire data, I put all just chokes. Okay. What was the technique behind it? Is, um, PO. Yeah, yeah. PO. Yeah, yeah. PO. What is the storage? It's a storage it's a storage uh, flat PO file. But the point is that you, we are basically talking about uh, one hundred thousand files. And it's using the file system to, to find which uh, which files were updated since the last time Putol was, was started, for example. And if you want to, to, to start 100,000 files, it takes no time. Yeah, there, is, there is work in progress by the Putol developers. They have a sum of code projects about performance issues and the like. So Friedel, who is the main lead developer, told me that first the SVN version of Putol would be more efficient, but we are using the package version, the release <coughs> version, and one of their plans for the future is to improve this situation. But we are the big, the people who demand the most to Putol country. Uh, who are the Putol developer and are there any Debian connected people or is this completely uh, Debian connected is Nicolas <laughs> So Putol is developed by Transfet.za, which is a company in uh, South Africa. So it's developed on the on the source code project. And well, I, I can't really say what exactly do do the company, but they are doing a lot of uh, tools, but not only tools. They are trying to m manage some translation. In uh, in Africa, um, you may have heard about uh, some translaton, which are like uh, Akaton, but for translation, and so they 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 provide I think some uh, infrastructure to to some people in some country, and they write with the infrastructure, and people can. Uh, <coughs> work there on translating some softwares. But now, so I, I would say that now Putol is becoming um, a collaborative project yeah. more and more. Uh, Mozilla people are in now involved yeah. in, uh, there is a, Pu how do you call it? Mo Putolzilla most or whatever. Putol or most mo mo oh yeah, yeah. most Putol also. They are, they are developing some specific yeah. stuff for Mozilla. Open Office, is, Open Office using is using uh, Putol also. Yes, and uh, Putol supports more than PO files. Right. Yeah. It supports XLIF uh, files, which are um, professional style. Uh, translation stuff with translation memory and the like. So last year, I think about Putol, some people gathered around uh, the, the core developer who, who were basically Friedel, Wolf, and Dwayne Bailey for the translate toolkit. And it's, it's <coughs> like the known translators are using Putol. Some translation teams have their own Putol server. And some of the people, the, the Basque team, who translate Debian in Basque, uh, ha, they have their own Putol server. So I, I'm quite optimistic about how we could develop, uh, we could, how Putol will be developed in the future. But good Python developer would help, I think, yes. So and there is a Debian package, too, if you want to install uh, a Putol server. 
and also we have uh, very good contact with the team. So that's also yeah, that quite good, good news. That's so basically they are taking our uh, uh, use cases into account, like millions of files. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I, I will need to, to manage the time, sorry. Uh, schedule. Uh, uh, schedule. <laughs> yes, schedule master. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, I think it's now one point um, for the details. We have uh, one big problem that the translation stuff is not really on the FTP master. This, um, the files on the FTP master are, I think, two years old or older. Um, and, um, Last week we made some progress in this direction and to fix this. Um, Actually, the new ones aren't in the FTP master already. Actually, yes. It's this morning. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. They are not, they are not propagated. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have submitted it before we. They are, okay. wait, they are waiting to be propagated in the next install or the other one. In one or two installs, they will be there. Okay. Maybe. We hope so. I don't believe it. <laughs> I will see it. Um, okay, we, we make some scripts and um, uh, um, test tweets in some some things, and um, maybe we can start daily updates of the um, of the translation files uh, to the server, so that every user can use it um, and can try it. And I hope then I can get all this um, fixed page um, for port bugs. In the translation, if somebody finds the things that are not correct, then they can put it in this uh, web interface and send this mail with the web interface to the translation. Okay, we are okay. really running out of time, I'm afraid, so I didn't manage the meeting very well. But still, not. that's basically the status we have about infrastructure. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the point is to decide what to do with the three remaining <coughs> meetings we have and make them really discussion and work sessions. Uh, I don't know if I have this schedule around here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next meeting we have is, I guess, day three. Twelve o'clock. Two days. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to see what I did put in the meeting. <laughs> uh, okay, this is not much for work. Uh, translation days. Yes, uh, that would be a point uh, to discuss. And this one, I really want to be a, uh, a work meeting more than presentation stuff. We need to talk about TDEX, so we need to take care to bring me, to bring the FTP masters, release managers, and uh, all interested people, of course, to talk about this TDEX. Uh, we will not make, we need to really advance on no presentation of what is a TDEX. And uh, so if there are people around who want to know what is a TDEX, just talk to me or to myself. We will try to explain in advance what it might be. <laughs> That's correct. Right. With your schedule? Or That's fine, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll make yeah. sure that you know, I'll be at each of the same. Yeah, this is the one way. So don't go to Andrea's talk. And <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you to the video team for recording that stuff. Thanks.